All right, today I'm gonna to be going through a Yamaha Moto 4 350. We're gonna go through and service this machine as well as go through the back end. We're gonna go through some electrical components. I'm gonna show you how to remove the carburetor then completely go through it, clean it up, rebuild it, get it ready to go if your fuel is leaking or if your four-wheeler just isn't running right, isn't starting, isn't idling right. I'm gonna go through and service that carburetor as well. So check out my channel for the rest of those videos. If you've got questions on anything on this Yamaha Moto 4, make sure and leave those in a comment below. If you'd like me to do a video on there, um, on this particular model, make sure and leave those in the comments below as well. So I'm gonna go through now and service this four-wheeler. Starting with the right hand side here, you'll see an oil dipstick right above your clutch cover here. And this is gonna be the actual dipstick. This is gonna tell uh, this is how you can tell where that oil is sitting. This four-wheeler is cold right now. We haven't ran it. Typically, when you check your oil, you want to start your four-wheeler, let it run for a minute or two, let the four-wheeler sit for a minute or two, and then go ahead and check your oil. Dip your dipstick in there. You don't have to thread it in. Pull it out. Check your oil level there. Obviously, you want it between those two marks there. One's low, one's full. You want to make sure it's in between there. The next thing right above there, and I'll show you where to pull the drain plug on this when we get to the other side there. But like I said, we've got your clutch cover here. We've got your uh, odometer gear here. That's your cable that runs in uh, just above your clutch cover there. Actually, into the side of your clutch cover there is going to be your speedometer gear there. Here's your clutch adjust. On this machine, you've got a 12 millimeter lock nut there and then a flathead screw. And I've done several other videos on adjusting clutches there, but I just wanted to point out where that was. You can see there it has a decrease. I believe it also says increase down here. You wanna make sure that you're going the correct way when you go to adjust those clutches on there. Here you'll see a, a number written on there. It says 2400CM. That is essentially about 2.4 quarts of oil uh, is what this four-wheel will take when you drain that oil. So right in front of your clutch cover there is your starter. If you hear a clicking or your four-wheeler isn't turning over, that's one of the first places I would check. Obviously, you want to make sure your battery is good and charged up. You can go to the other side there. You've got a recoil pull starter in case that starter goes bad or if your battery goes bad. So make sure you use those. Um, if you need to. On this side here, you've got your spark plug. Uh, to pull that spark plug to replace it, just go ahead and pull up on this cap. It should be a little stiff pulling out of there. Um, there's some um, splines on here that kind of hold that cap on. That way that cap doesn't bounce off. Go ahead and replace your uh, spark plug there and I'll get you those specs here at the end of the video. This lever here on the top of the cylinder head is, an, is a decompression lever. If you're having a hard time starting this four-wheeler, you can take and pull up on there, leave it up there, and that will uh, cause your valves um, to open up. That way your four-wheeler has less compression. That way you can start it up a little bit easier. Then once it starts running, I believe they should kick down automatically. Otherwise, if it doesn't, you obviously want to take and put that down. It's not going to run to its full potential if you leave that up. On the right-hand side as well as your ignition switch there. Turn that to turn the four-wheeler on. Also on the right-hand side, you've got your brake pedal here. Step on it if you uh, want to slow down. That's going to control just the rear brakes. You've got a cable running back here on the other side of your fender. Runs back to your rear brake caliper, and I'll show you that here in a little bit. On here, like I said, this is a two-wheel drive, so we don't have a front differential here, so it looks pretty empty up here in the front of the frame there. We've got your tie rods here. Those are adjustable on either side. Make sure you get your wheels uh, straight when you're going down the road. You don't want your four-wheeler veering off uh, when you're not hanging on to those handlebars. I do suggest hanging on to those handlebars when you're going down the road, though. Shocks are fully adjustable. You've got about four or five different settings on each shock there. I've done several other videos on how to adjust these shocks, uh, but you use a spanner wrench here. Again, on that video, I'll show you a couple tricks to where you don't need that spanner wrench. Check those videos out. Common problem here is these bushings in these shocks. These wear out. This suspension isn't ideal on this 1987 four-wheeler, uh, as you'd expect for being uh, pretty old. So you want to make sure you check those periodically when you lift up on your four-wheeler or if you hear a lot of rattling in your front end, you may want to check these bushings. Lowers here, uppers up there, and they do have a tendency of going bad, so make sure and check those out. Tie rods there, I already touched on a little bit, but you want to make sure you loosen up the lock nut on the steering stem side as well as the lock nut on the wheel uh, hub side there. And once you loosen those up, then you can just take a wrench, put it on that groove, 
uh, right through there and turn them. That's, I believe, a 10 millimeter there on your tie rods there. That's how you turn those and adjust those. Brakes, there's a caliper on either side there, a brake drum on either side. So this is the right-hand side here. You've got a butterfly nut there. You want those brakes engaging at the same time. You don't want one wheel engaging before the other. So I like to adjust those even, evenly. And then when you pull those handles, that handle in there, it should stop both wheels from turning about the same tension there. Grease certs on your A-arms there on the front. And then on the knuckles there on the outside, you have some there. And also on the other side there, which would be your right hand side. Headlights right there, pretty obvious. All right, up here on the left-hand side by your left-hand knee, you've got your uh, forward and reverse lever. Now, it's not typically like this. You typically have a little grab handle here that you hang on to. You push it uh, depending on if you're wanting to go forward or backwards there. So that being said, you've got your forward and backward, your forward and reverse lever here. Down here on your left foot there is your gear shifter. You've got five speeds there. Obviously, all of them are up. And then if you want to go back down to neutral, just uh, step down on that lever there. This isn't typically how you'd find this one. Somebody has taken and welded this on. It's going to make it very difficult to change the oil on here. But this is where your oil filter is. Underneath this cover here, we have got an Allen, an Allen, and an Allen. These are specialty Allens. You want to make sure that they go back in the correct order in the correct spot and use the correct ones uh, when you're going and changing that oil there. So Pull these Allens, underneath there is your oil filter. Let that drain out. Now, the correct order for draining your oil is warm your four-wheeler up for a couple minutes. You don't want it too hot, otherwise you're gonna scold your hand when you go ahead and pull that bottom drain plug. Then, at that time, shut your four-wheeler off, pull your bottom drain plug, which is right there on your four-wheeler. It's about a two and a half inch cap, and that is a larger socket to get on there. You wanna make sure that you've got a good socket going on there so you don't round it off when that um, when you are loosening that cap underneath that cap there, you'll find a spring and a screen. That screen will sit down inside that spring and then that cap will hold everything in there. You want to make sure that that goes in straight. Make sure that that O-ring on that cap is good. And I'll show you a picture of that, uh, cap and what that spring looks like. So you have an idea what you're looking for. You want to make sure you get all those pieces back in there when you're going back together. Once that oil is drained or is draining, grab a drain pan, go underneath your oil filter cover here and go ahead and pull these three Allens. Your oil will start draining out of there and you've got a lot of oil because up front here you've got an oil cooler and those lines are set in a position where they're gonna continue to drain out as well. So you wanna make sure that you let that oil drain from your oil cooler and your oil filter, put those back in and snug these Allens back up. Again, make sure you get them in the right order. Go ahead and put your drain plug back in and then go to the other side and fill your oil up. 2.4 quarts is about what it takes. Uh, what I do is put about two and a quarter in, then I let that four-wheeler sit there and run for a minute or two, and then go ahead and shut it off, check that oil, make sure it's full before you take it off the lift and start using it. You've got a recoil pull starter on this left-hand side. This is it here. It's got a mechanism in here that when you pull this rope, it, it, it uh, springs out a couple different arms, hooks on a cup in here, and it'll grab that motor and turn that over. So you want to make sure that you've got a good working pull starter before you go out on a long ride. That way, if your battery fails, your starter fails, you'll still have a backup way of starting this four-wheeler. Left-hand side here, be behind your kneecap, you've got your fuel petcock. You've got three different positions on reserve and off. Off is going to be horizontal position there. On and reserve will be the vertical positions. On the front left-hand side will be your VIN number. Right on the frame, right in front of your uh, front mud flap here is going to be your VIN number. That's going to be 17 digits long, and that'll tell you what year it is, where it was manufactured, uh, the model that it is. Most Yamaha dealerships will tell you what year and model you have if you call in with that VIN number. As these four-wheelers get older, it does make it a little more difficult to read those numbers. They get worn off. I like to make sure I have those written in another place just in case I need those at some point. Right here is your cam chain tensioner. I'm just going to go over a couple motor components at this time. I will do more detailed when we go through and rebuild this motor. But we've got your cam chain tensioner here, cam sprocket cover here. When we go to adjust valves, we've got a, your exhaust side here. Your intake is uh, right behind your carburetor there. Exhaust head pipe here. Here's your cylinder. Here is your top dead center cap. 
that you need to pull. I pull this recoil pull starter when I do adjust the valves and then I look down in here and I can tell when I'm on top dead center. You've got a crankcase breather hose here and that's just gonna go up to, that's just gonna go to a higher spot on your folder there. You've got oil line here. Again, your carburetor's here. On the left-hand side, you've got an idle adjust, so if you need to turn that idle up, make sure you use that adjuster. Make sure your four-wheeler's good and warmed up before you start adjusting those. I like to only do small increments when it comes time to adjust my idle. On the back side here, we've got your battery. This is obviously the wrong size battery, so we'll re be replacing it with a good one. Um, and right in front of your battery there is your CDI box. This is a common problem. These are very, very expensive. And what happens is they fail. You can't test these. There's not a way to test these. And so you just got to replace that if you've checked other components and you find that those other components are good. In front of that there is your starter relay. And that's what takes your power from your battery. Uh, goes through that switch there when you hit the switch hit the start button on your dash there and then runs that power to your starter motor. So if you hear a clicking on your four wheeler, a lot of times your starter relay is good. It's your battery that's bad or your starter motor that's bad. Uh, but it can mean that your starter solenoid is bad, but nine times out of 10, if you hear clicking, it's not your starter solenoid. You've also got a couple other connectors here. Your stator assembly will run up into this area here. Your stator wire connectors will run up into this area here, and that's where they hook up. You've got a rear output shaft underneath this cover here. You've got a, a rubber boot here that protects that U-joint that's gonna run down through your swing arm and to your rear differential here. This is your differential to service this differential. You've got a drain plug underneath here. That is gonna be an Allen bolt. Comes up from the bottom there. You can get through it through the skid plate. If you'd like to do that, you will drip a little bit of oil on this skid plate. Not a big deal, but sometimes I'll pull those just so I don't have the mess on our skid plate. So pull that Allen bolt there. You're gonna drain that oil out of there and I will get you the specs on that. Here's your fill plug here. You wanna make sure once your drain plug is in that you fill this oil up to the bottom threads of this cap here. And then you know that you've got enough oil in there. That is the only check bolt that you have, so make sure you've got enough oil in there. Your rear shock, fully adjustable, just like your front there. You've got a handful of different settings there. Right there, you can see that it's in the middle setting. There, if you're needing to stiffen up that suspension, if you've got a heavy ride in the back, you can go ahead and do that, turn that uh, shock the way that you need to go there. Rear brake assembly here. This is a disc brake underneath of this housing here. You've got two butterfly nuts. One's gonna go up to the handlebars. The other one's gonna go to the foot brake there. You wanna make sure that you adjust these properly so that if you put tension on your brake pedal, um, it's going to slow your four-wheeler down. Also the same with the front if you put uh, tension on that brake handle, you want to make sure it slows your four-wheeler down. You don't want one of them dragging, the other one not functioning at all. Make sure you uh, get those adjusted to where they need to be. Rear storage box here, you've got two rubber flaps, and that is the storage box. The tail light is attached to that lid there. On the right-hand side in the rear, you've got your exhaust muffler there. These baffles have a tendency of going bad, just like this one here. It blows the end out of this and unfortunately you've got to replace your exhaust pipe at that time if you're wanting that four-wheeler to be somewhat quiet and somewhat safe on forest trails and national parks. So we're right back to where we started here on the right-hand side. I'm gonna go up and we're gonna check air filter here. We're gonna go up to the handlebars. I'm gonna show you some of those components. Remove the seat on this model on the left-hand side. On the rear is a little lever there. Go ahead and grab that lever. I'll flip this seat over show you what it looks like here. It looks like this here. So you just gotta push that lever down. That's gonna pull that arm back. That's gonna allow you to unhook that seat. Also up front, you have this tab here that's gonna slide in right underneath your fuel tank. Fuel tank is up front there. There's your filler cap there. You wanna make sure you got a vent hose on there. Otherwise, that fuel tank cannot breathe and you're gonna have issues with your four-wheeler running. Air box is here. You should have four Phillips screws all the way around this air box. Underneath there is your air filter. You've got a cage and a filter. Make sure that those are in good condition. Make sure that filter is changed and replaced and cleaned every time you service your four-wheeler. On the right-hand side here, you've got your thumb throttle. That is, push that. Your four-wheeler is gonna go faster. Here's your brake lever here. We've got a very, very long brake lever on this one, so I'm not sure what the deal is with that, but that's not stock, should not be sticking 
uh, two inches over your grip there. Left hand side here, you've got your switch. This is a safety switch on and off there. That'll, that'll kill your engine if you need to. You've got your lights, three different positions, off, low, and high beam. You've got your starter button on the left hand side as well. On your dash, you have your speedometer there. You've got your trip reset here. You've got your uh, odometer there, 21,279 miles on this one. You've got your choke lever here. If you want to choke it, go ahead and pull that lever, pull it up just like that. It's going to hold that position until you shut it off. Right here, you've got two different indicator lights. You've got neutral and reverse. You will need to uh, have it in neutral to start your four-wheeler there. You've got a throttle stop here to allow that throttle not be pushed all the way. If you've got a beginner rider on here, you can take and loosen up this lock nut here, run this Phillips screw in, and then your throttle is not going to be able to be pushed as far. That's going to not allow that four wheeler to go as fast. Now when it's time to go fast again, you can loosen up this lock nut, run this Phillips screw out as far as you need, and that will allow that four wheeler to go a little bit faster. All right, that is an overview on a Yamaha Moto 4 350. If you guys have questions on this machine, make sure and leave those in the comments below. I'll do my best to help you out answering those. If you've got service videos you'd like me to do on this four-wheeler, also make sure you leave those in the comments below. I'm open to do that. I appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Make sure you give us the thumbs up and share this video to somebody that you think would be helpful. Thanks a lot.